Hi everyone. So today I'm actually doing a quick book review over this book. Um, Is the Bible Good for Women? Um, by Wendy Alsup. Um, I actually got this book from the bargain section of Mardell. Um, it was cheap. I was like, oh, it sounds interesting. I never heard of this author um, before. Um, you might know who she is. You might have heard of her books, but this was my first book that I read from her. And I actually really enjoyed it. So just to give you the dilemma, I guess you can say, that women face concerning the Bible. There are passages in the Bible that sound a little bit, I guess, unfair for women. Um, we hear of passages where women must submit to their husbands. We hear of passages where it talks about in the Old Testament that when women are on their cycle, that they were considered to be unclean. Uh, we hear of when women were raped in biblical times, that they were to marry their rapists. Um, you know, just story after story of things that when we look at it today, it sounds like the Bible is not made for women. It sounds like it's very chauvinist. Um, and this book actually puts all that into perspective. It helps you understand. And I will say that this book, this book helped me tremendously in those areas. So one of the first things that it goes from the very beginning, it talks about the role of women. Um, you, we know that Adam was created and he did not find a suitable person, right? He was naming all the animals and he couldn't find someone that looked like him. And God created women, right? He created Eve. And when you look at how she's created, she was created to be a helper. Read Genesis, you will see that that was how she was created. And, you know, for some women, when they hear that, they get upset. Like, helper, like, I'm not going to be a housemaid. I'm not going to just take care of the house and just take care of all the kids. And, you know, that's not the type of person that I am. I have my career. I have this, that, and the other. And so, you know, there's this perspective that women have today where they don't like the idea of being stuck in the house. And that is actually understandable. Nowhere in here does it say, um, or in the Bible, I should say, that you have to be a housewife. It says you are to be a helper and you are to help um, manage the household, right? Um, you definitely have some skills when it comes to keeping the house in order better than the man does, but that does not mean that you are stuck to just staying at home, being a stay-at-home mom, okay? We've seen examples in the Bible where women did outside activities, right? The Proverbs 31 women um, is a great example that people love to use all the time of how a woman should be, right? And when you read Proverbs 31, you see that women actually had jobs. That she, in Proverbs 31, she made garments and she sell, sold them, right? So that's a job that she had. But we also can't forget that she also woke up before even her servants, made them breakfast, you know, provided for everyone in her family. Everyone in her family had clothes on their back. They were not lacking. They were not cold in the winter time. They had food that they were eating. So she still did things in the house, right? But she also had servants 
as well. So she didn't do everything, right? She had people to help as well, right? So don't feel as though you're a woman that that doesn't mean that you can't get people to help you. You can have your children help. You can have your husband help, right? It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that the husband can't do chores or that the children can't do chores, right? But you can see that there is a type of management that women have. Women are very good at these things, okay? Um, and that's because God created us this way. And, you know, some of you might be thinking, well, that's just not fair. I think that there's men who have, uh, you know, there's there's been men that have shown to be great stay-at-home dads and, and all that. And I think that's fine, too. There could be stay-at-home dads. That's perfectly fine. But when you really think about the fact that women were designed to be helpers to man, that's actually a great thing. Because who is the greatest helper of all? God. So we are definitely made in the image of God. God helps us all the time. And so we have characteristics of God. By being a helper, we are actually being similar to how God is, right? Man also has different characteristics that God has given him, right? Um, he is the spiritual leader in the house, right? Um, he is to be like Christ, right? Um, and, and love us just like Christ loved the church, right? It's supposed to love the family, take care of the family. Um, but women in particular, I'm, I'm focusing in on us because I feel that we have forgotten our purpose. We've forgotten that we are good at helping. You know, now there's some people who are very f into feminism. And so anything that's like a woman, they are anti that. They automatically do whatever a man does. And that's not the answer either, right? Just, just denying the characteristics and qualities that God has given you and just going all the way to the other side and acting like a man, that... <laughs> That's not good either. I strongly believe that God is, I don't wanna say he's a feminist per se, but he does care for women's protection. He does care for women's um, persona and all of that. You have to remember when you read the Bible, you have to read it in context of the culture, the region, the time frame, all of that. When we look at like the laws in the Old Testament, guess what? It's based off of their culture, their region, their like time, like all of it. You know, God is, uh, he is a very smart God. He provides us with instruction for our day and time because he knows when we are ready for different things. During this time, in biblical times, culturally, it has been the norm for women to be seen as property, okay? Women, part of the reason why you would marry certain women to certain families was because of um, what is it that that woman can bring into the family or what is it that husband can bring into the family type of thing. So it's a very different type of uh, contract than what we see today, right? In our marriages today, we see, okay, do I love him? Do I not love him? Okay, I can marry him because I love him type of thing. Uh, but they, not that they didn't love each other, um, but it was more on the financial and the survival mechanism, okay? So keeping that in mind, okay, uh, that helps put things into perspective, okay? Now, remember I said that there's a passage in the Bible that talks about if a woman is raped, then the man who raped her uh, ought to marry her. And when we think of that today, we are like, oh my goodness, this is horrible. I would never wanna marry my rapist. But again, you got to put it in perspective of that time frame. In that time frame, if a woman was 
um, you know, raped or, you know, had sex out of wedlock, she was considered to be unpure. Um, no man would want her as a wife. And so that became a problem, of course, because women really did depend on men during those times for their um, protection, their foods, clothing, everything, right? Men were the primary um, source of income, as you can say. And so when someone rapes a woman, they take that from her. And so this law was actually put into place to protect the woman. So that way, after she's raped, she is not forced to be stuck in a situation where she cannot, you know, provide for herself, that she would never be able to get married. And so that was an option that was um, provided by God. Now, that's another thing that you must understand that even though that there's laws and rules that were listed, we know that the law was not perfect. It states that in the New Testament that it was not perfect because there, there were still problems with the law, right? Um, and the, obviously this is one of those laws, right? But it was implemented in that point in time because God knew in that time frame and that culture that is something that the women needed okay when you look through the bible and you read through it if you got, if you focus in on just the women and how women are treated in the bible you will notice that there is a progression remember there was the fall right eve ate the forbidden fruit adam ate the forbidden fruit they fell which caused this this life that you know we all have now um, but if you look at that and you read through the Bible you will see that God is actually trying to restore things right so we get to the laws that Moses state and these laws are actually to help protect women okay uh, we're, we're talking about the menstrual cycle one that women were considered to be dirty uh, when they have their menstrual cycle and they were, were to leave out of the town right during their menstrual cycle again putting this in context they did not have the hygiene practices that we have today if you are a woman and you have menstrual blood coming out of you it's not like they had you know easy access to tampons and maxi pads and running water you know, it, it was an issue of hygiene. It was an issue of, you know, it, is it safe? You know, the, the blood itself. Um, so they did have to separate out because of that, okay? And it wasn't just women that had to be separated out, right? There's other examples where there were concerns that if these bodily fluids or this type of sickness or whatever were to stay within that community that it might spread it might cause problems and so instead they are asked to leave out to a separate area okay now yes that wasn't the most ideal but that was what god knew would work for them at that point in time with the resources that they had okay um now when we continue to look through the bible we actually start to see examples of God taking care of women. So remember, this society as a whole kind of looks down at women. Okay, you go and you look at the East now, uh, you see, or the Middle East, I should say, or Near East, depending on who you're talking to, um, that women are not considered to be the same class as men, right? Um, and that was the case back then as well right but you will start to see that god is actually trying to show that he respects women that he loves women okay that they're um that he will take care of them okay um i think a great example of this is christ when christ comes when he came and he spoke with a samaritan woman 
not only was he speaking to a Samaritan, but he was speaking to a Samaritan woman. That's not something that people just did, right? Um, you, you didn't just have conversations with women about biblical concepts. That's not something that was the norm in those days. But God didn't care. Jesus didn't care, right? Um, you have the story of Mary washing his feet, right? Um, and, and how does he treat her? With love and compassion, right? Well, well, other people would look at her like this prostitute, this, this, you know, coming in doing this, seeing her as filth and rags and, and, and just horrible. He doesn't see her as that. He understands that part of the reason why she probably had to become a prostitute was probably sometime in her past, maybe she was raped or maybe, you know, you never know. Sometimes women are forced to become prostitutes because no one would marry them because of, you know, they've been undefiled, you know, they've been defiled um, in the past, right? Christ knew, knows those things. God knows those things. I think a great example is actually in his lineage. Rahab was a prostitute. Like that was her living, right? She was a prostitute. She wasn't even an Israelite. She was in Jericho. And because she knew that God was a true God, her faith in God saved her during that time where Jericho's walls were coming down. She got saved during that time um, from that, you know, that war, that battle. And she was allowed into their country. And she became a part of the lineage of Christ, meaning she got married, even though she was a prostitute before, right? She was given honor to the point that she got married and she was a part of the lineage of Christ. So if you really think about that, when you think about, you know, these stories, okay, there's a lot, I mean, almost every single story of a woman in the Bible, you see God showing that women are worth something, right? Um, and, you know, that's what I, I loved about this book, that it showed that, you know, a lot of times when people read the Bible, they automatically look at it at a certain way, not looking at it in context of the culture in its day, and how really profound it was that different things were done that really spoke out loud, like, wow, like, you know, the culture thinks this way about women, but obviously God feels this way about women because he does not care what the culture says. You know, he is trying to show them honor. Um, and I think it, you know, especially in this day and age where women are really trying to stand up and have a sense of, not necessarily identity, but say, I am here, I'm a woman, I am important. Just read the Bible and you will see that you are important and that God always thought you were important, that you never were second class in his eyes and that, you know, knowing that you, you as a person are chosen, you are special by him. Um, so th for me, this book was very, it was important, I guess you can say for me, because I was struggling because we, within the church, and there's a video that I posted, uh, a few years back by John MacArthur, um, called Different by Design. And there's parts about that, um, book that I still strongly agree with, um, but I think the big misconception is that women are second class citizens um, and that women are to, like I said, just be housewives and things like that. Um, yes, we are to help and we should be grateful for our ability to help um, and not complain in our capacity and our abilities to help because let's be honest, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys are married, but... I I feel that I have more skills in certain areas than my husband. Um, you know, I can't speak for every marriage. I can't speak for every woman and 
and male relationship. But in my relationship, it's very clear that I'm I'm better at certain things. I'm I'm good at organizing. I'm good at cooking. I wasn't at first, but once I started working at it, I got really great at it. Um, even though my husband cooked before I started cooking, I cook better than him now. And is that just because I'm a woman? I don't know. I can't tell you that. But I do know that, um, you know, that God did design us to be helpers. And I have the desire to cook um, more so than my husband does. Now, there are times I don't feel like cooking. And, and then they, they talk about that, too, that we sometimes... Um, you know, the whole idea of being a helper, like I said, sometimes it's looked at as a bad thing. But something that I, I actually learned this even before I read this book. When you are doing things in your household, do it as though you're doing it for God, not for the people in your household. What do I mean when I say that? So if you're cooking or you're cleaning, I don't always like to clean. Actually, I don't like to clean. <laughs> I like my house being clean, but the process of cleaning is not fun. The process of cooking sometimes is fun and sometimes it's not. It just depends. Um, all these things are struggles. I can do them. I can do them well, you know, but that doesn't mean I like them, right? Um, and my husband knows that there are certain things that I'm very good at doing, right? Um, but I don't do it for him, right? And I think that for me, that was something that I had to learn early in my marriage. I felt like, okay, you're going to clean because you love me. You should you should help out and clean. You should, you should cook because you love me, right? Like you should help out. And I think there's a lot of marriages that are like this. That they, they struggle because... They, they feel like, okay, if you're my husband and you really love me, then you would do your part and you would clean the house too and you would do certain things. And I'm not saying that men shouldn't clean. And I'm not saying that men shouldn't do their part, All right? But what I am saying is if you're doing it just for the other person, eventually you're going to get frustrated, right? Because that other person might not ever do it for you, right? Um, and so if you you keep doing this stuff for the other person, you keep cleaning, you make them their lunch, you, you know, whatever it is, and they're not doing it back, you know, you get mad, you get resentment and you get anger towards that person. Cause for you, you're doing it for them because you love them and you feel like, you know, because I love you, I'm going to do this type thing. But for them, that might not necessarily be the case. They still love you. And they don't necessarily have the desire to clean for you type thing. Um, and so instead of having the perspective of, you know, doing it because you love someone, do it for God. It makes such a difference. It really does. And you don't get mad if they don't do it. Everything you do, you do it for the glory of God. When I clean, I think that it is me being a servant to God me doing this because this is what I know that God wants me to do. You know, I, I keep my house clean because I think of how, you know, obviously he cares about a clean house because he gave all those, uh, you know, sanitation laws in the beginning. So obviously, you know, he does care about cleanliness, right? Um, so for me, at least that's how I interpret it. So I do that because I want to do my best in everything I do, in my cleaning, in my cooking, in the way I handle myself with other people, with regarding, you know, um, keeping myself from sin, any area in my life, I want to do it as though I'm doing it to God, right? So by keeping your house clean and doing, you know, whatever it needs to be done, if you're doing it for the glory of God and not for the approval of your spouse, it makes a load of a difference. It really does. And then if your spouse is not doing what they are, to, what you feel that they are to do, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as much because you're not looking at it as 
a means of, well, if you love me, you would have done this type thing. They're on their own walk. Everyone's on their own walk with, with, with God, right? And where you're at in your walk right now is you know that you need to do certain things to be a helper. If, if you're a woman, woman watching this, that's what God created you to be. If you don't believe me, read Genesis. Okay, the beginning parts, a few chapters of Genesis when Eve is created. Okay, um, and you know, knowing your, I think it's, there's power in knowing your role in knowing how God created you. If you know who you are, then it's easier to step into your role and do what you are, are to do. Okay. Um, and having that servant heart, knowing that you're doing it for God and not necessarily for the approval of man, that is powerful in itself. Okay. I, I you know, it's not fun cleaning. It's not. I mean, I'll have my moments where I'm enjoying cleaning, but for the most part, it's not. It is a type of suffering and it's a type of sacrifice. It really is. But that's just it. As a Christian, you read through all the epistles, <laughs> our life is a life of suffering. It's what it is. And that message is not preached enough. We are to suffer for the cause of Christ. Meaning we suffer day to day in our daily lives with the daily activities that we do. And we may be suffering in actual suffering like martyrdom, you know, people getting persecuted and, and beat for their faith. But just walking your life out as a Christian is suffering. Because the average person, the average person is selfish, right? The average person does not care about, you know, what other person may think or anything like that. If, you know, that, that is the average person that's not a Christian, okay? But we are Christians, so guess what? We are called to do things differently. And I'd rather suffer now than suffer for all eternity, which will be the case for people who do not accept Christ and when I say accept Christ, I mean not just say a prayer of faith, but true faith produces works, right? True faith has fruit. Um, I have to say that because there's a lot of people who just say a prayer, but they don't change their life. That's not true faith, right? Um, so there's so much more in this book. Um, just to give you a quick uh, rundown of the different chapters so she talks about you know how did Jesus actually approach the Bible uh, what was good in the beginning meaning in Genesis uh, what were we made to be how did it all go wrong is it going to get better is the law good for women so I kind of talked about that um, today a little bit um, what are our instructions for today and then she goes into the epistles. So uh, Paul and Peter wrote to the churches and there's passages on submission, right? Um, that again gets, gets misinterpreted and women have a hard time with at the same time. Submission is not necessarily a bad thing, okay? Um, but I will say that a lot of people have a misunderstanding of submission guys and girls okay um and so really good read her perspective on it um the instructions to men are the instructions given to men good for women right so there's different instructions that god just gives to the husbands and the and the males well does that affect women in a negatively way negative way um and then the last question is god good for women so after you put all this in perspective the Bible, Jesus, the apostles, everything that has been taught, is God actually good for women? I'm going to say yes, <laughs> that he definitely is. Spoiler alert. Um, but I do want you to, you know, get this book. Get it. It will change your life. It changed my life. You know, I'll, like with any book, don't just automatically take everything that someone says. Study it for yourself. 
Um, like there are a few things in here that I did not agree with. That's every book that I read, okay? Um, but for the most part, there's a lot of good nuggets in here. Um, so I really highly encourage you to pick it up and to read it, all right? Um, so that's all I have today. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye.